I'm not saying this because it was hard for me, so it must be hard for you. But when I was playing on the USA team and in the pro league kind of together at the same time, if I was not throwing my curveball four days a week, it would be just a touch of inconsistent. Like it just, sometimes it wouldn't break as much or, but if I was throwing it four days a week, boom, boom, it just was on. My name is Jamie Southern and welcome to the Weekly Dose. This week we are going to finish up with the curveball. The curveball is, in my opinion, one of the harder pitches to learn. And everybody has their opinion. Some are like, that's the next pitch that I teach after a fastball. And for me, the reason why I feel like it is a harder pitch to learn is because there is a lot of timing that has to go into this pitch. So what that means is, is that our front foot has to be planted and land, like we have to use our front side and our front leg to be able to spin our body and to spin the ball. We need to make sure that our elbow is in a good position to be able to make sure that the curveball is not stuck behind me but that it's in here ready to spin it. Our glove hand is very important with this pitch because we can't have our glove over here and our ball right here. Do you see how I'm just gonna throw it? It's not gonna be a good curveball. We've gotta make sure that everything comes together and the timing is perfect. And so I'm not saying this because it was hard for me, so it must be hard for you. But I will tell you that when I was playing on the USA team and in the pro league kind of together at the same time, if I was not throwing my curveball four days a week, it would be just a touch of inconsistent. Like it just, sometimes it wouldn't break as much or, but if I was throwing it four days a week, boom, boom, it just was on. And that's just a timing, like it's just a timing. So you may say, wow, that I really can connect with that. And that makes sense because sometimes my pitches, it doesn't have to be the curveball, sometimes this pitch is so inconsistent and others it's not. I want you to start noticing how many times a week you're throwing it because that may be something that you're like, it's just a consistency issue and I need to build that muscle memory and continue to have that muscle memory. So you may say, oh my gosh, I really wanna throw three days this week because I'm gonna throw Saturday, Sunday, I'm gonna be so sore, I have my lesson on Wednesday. That's okay, I, I did that. Like I did not throw every single day. But you may have to say, I have to go out and just throw my curveball. I just gotta throw my curveball for 10 minutes just to make sure I can maintain it. So every pitch can be different. So you have to start developing. You can't just do what everybody else does because you're different than them. So you may have to have a practice routine that is more fitted for yourself and the pitches that you throw. Okay, so curveball. We are trying to get the four seam rotation to go away from a right-handed hitter. Um, it's what we're trying to do. And you'll see a lot of the times it'll be a little tilted because it's just like the, the axis is off. I'm not gonna say that I didn't have that. Like I did, I did not have pure, pure, spin. Now, I will also say that I was never taught that that's truly what we're trying to do with the ball. It was, and this might kind of click with you, is, hey, you're going to hold the ball like this and you're going to go hip to hip, right? That's what I heard. And if you hear that, that that's partially right, but that's not really truly what we're trying to do. And I will tell you, the hip to hip for me doesn't click and it doesn't make sense because when we pitch this ball and we come down, we have two hips, yes, and they say hip to hip, right? But what about the part in the middle? That's the most important part. So when a pitcher hears, oh, you're gonna hold it like this and you're gonna get to that hip and then you're gonna snap it to your other hip, there's, there's a big chunk that's missing of what you're trying to do to this ball. So let me kind of show you. I hold my screwball, my rise ball, and my curveball all the same, remember, because I'm trying to get those four seams. So we have these two little lines. I'm kind of up here, 
so that I know that when I'm underneath the ball, my axis is up here and I'm gonna get those four seam rotation, okay? So back in the day though, I was taught to go a little bit lower. That Look at, it's off. It's just enough off. So I should have made sure that I went a little bit more up so that I can get that perfect spin, right? Let me show you with the spin doctor ball just because it's easier to identify and that's why we made these was be, because now it's perfect, right? I know how I'm gripping the ball. If your daughter said, well, I, I hold it right like this, perfect. See how it's off, right? That's not great spin. That's not great. It's not gonna be great spin because you're off. You gotta make sure that you can get it like that when you're underneath the ball. And so that's why these are wonderful because it gives that immediate feedback to know if you're doing it great or good or kind of bad spin, right? So I'm holding my ball here. As I come down, this kind of back part of my arm circle, I'm gonna really try to make sure I get underneath the ball. So as I'm here, I'm kind of coming underneath the ball and I'm focusing on bringing my elbow into the side of my tummy. So I'm here pulling down with my elbow to get in my tummy and you can see that my ball is in a great position. Now, what I'm trying to do is remember, I'm trying to spin the ball this way. So I'm gonna focus on spinning it across, right? Spinning it across. Now, I had a teammate in the pro league who was a, had a wonderful curveball. And she would come into the locker room and she'd have all these little polka dots on her upper thigh because she snapped that ball so much that her finger pointed back at her and it just would point. Now you notice that she wasn't coming up to her hip, hip to hip, right? Because if my ball, my hip bone is right here. Here's my hip bone. Why would I wanna come up to my hip, right? Now I'm gonna throw a, a curveball that might rise. And we wanna most likely, those are great pitches, right? Once you develop a good curveball, then you can add to where you want it to go. But for a pure curveball, we wanna make sure that it kinda of just goes on over into the strike zone. So I'm underneath the ball, and as I'm coming around and I'm pulling with my elbow, I'm gonna come down and spin the ball, and I should be poking, here's my hip right here. I should be poking the upper part of my thigh. We're coming under, we're gonna spin it around. You see how my thumb stays up the entire time? A lot of pitchers will come here and they start to point their thumb at the catcher. And that's just creating this bullet spin that's going right over there. So we wanna make sure that we can stay underneath the ball as we snap it, okay? So I will tell you, I know this is more than just grips and spins with the curveball, but I will tell you that a lot of the pitchers that would come to me with this curveball, they would start it down the middle and they would want to break it to the outside part of the plate. But you have to remember that the curveball is on the same plane as the bat swing, right? So I have my bat, I'm swinging, and my curveball is just going to go this way. So they're going to still make contact, right? And probably decent contact if it's crossing the middle of the plate. I have never, ever, no matter how old I was, started my pitches on the middle chunk part of the plate. I always started my curveball, especially high school and up. I mean, even eighth grade. I mean, I was corners. So I challenge you, if they're hitting your curveball and you know that you have a decent curveball and it's breaking, I challenge you to focus on throwing it to the corner and letting it break off the plate. Our job as pitchers to be effective is to be able to engage and tempt the batter to swing at our pitch and then it turns out to be a ball. Now, full count, how aggressive is the batter? I'm still gonna do the same thing. But if I have kind of a looker, I might have to start it a little bit more on the plate so that when it breaks, it's still a called strike. Every pitch is different depending on the umpire, the batter, where she's in their box, all that. So you can't just say, well, this is where I throw my curveballs. It should be different. But I challenge you to go for the strikeouts with this pitch. I challenge you to get foul balls, to get crap hits because it's off the end of their bat. If they're hitting your good curveball too hard, then you're putting it in the wrong place. So 
that's my advice to you. So we're always trying to get that four seam rotation, right? And I didn't have that knowledge until I started teaching. Like really make sure you know what you are doing with that ball, okay? Let me know if you guys have any questions and we are going to add actually in the workout of the week, long toss with the curveball is so cool because if you have a good curveball already, even a great, but just even the minimum, a good curveball, when you throw it in the air and you launch it like a big rainbow, if you have enough spin, it's gonna just go ooh, and you're gonna be like, oh my gosh. But if you throw your curveball and it just stays straight, then it's not, A, doesn't have the right correct spin or it's not enough rotation on the ball to get it to break. So now we're just adding this distance to be able to give it more time to just ooh, fall off. Okay, so we're gonna add that to the workout of the week if you have room and if you have time, I get it. Sometimes you just go to the batting cage and you, you don't have 60, 90 feet to launch it. So, but the weather's getting better and so maybe you can find uh, a park or a field that you can kind of go out and really develop your curveball into something. Okay, I will see you guys later. Let me know if you have any questions.